it's Mr. Slope Guy here today to help with properties of parallel lines. Parallel lines today. Quick review, a couple concepts we've had in the past. Complementary angles are two angles whose measures add up to 90 degrees. We have two angles here, 65 and 25. Make this little box showing 90 degrees. Two angles that add up to 90 are complementary. And supplementary angles are two angles whose measures add up to 180 like 65 and 135 together they make a straight line they add up to 180 degrees is called supplementary and when we have two lines in a plane one of three things will happen they'll either be parallel and they'll go on forever without crossing they'll coincide where we have one line on top of each other where they will, every point that is in common in one line will be in common with the other or the two lines intersect they cross and when two lines intersect, they have pairs of angles that are formed. We have the two blue angles are vertical, and vertical angles have the same measure. They are congruent. They have the same measure. They are equal. So if we knew the blue one was 100 on this top part, the bottom one would be 100. And we have vertical angles here shown in pink, and the pink angles, like if one of these was 60, the other one would automatically be 60 because vertical angles are always equal. And when two lines intersect at right angles, they are called perpendicular. So if one of these angles is 90, then we know the other angle would have to be 90, and we have perpendicular lines. Kind of like where the floor uh, would meet the wall. It makes a 90 degree angle. So if two parallel lines are cut by a third line called a transversal, various pairs of angles are formed. So we have two parallel lines that have this notation on it to show that they're parallel. And this blue line is called the transversal, and it's cutting through these two parallel lines, and it makes all kinds of angles as it cuts through these two lines. And we're going to go through and talk about the names and properties of these specific angles. So when the transversal cuts through two parallel lines, corresponding angles are equal. And the angles we're talking about for corresponding would be these two angles in red. And if you have colored pencils or pens as you take notes, this would be a great time to break those out because we could do a little color coding on these to make them easier to recognize because you will be assessed and need to know the names of these angles, not just that they're equal, but these two angles in red are called corresponding. And if we know one angle, we automatically know the other because corresponding angles are equal. These two angles shown in purple are also called corresponding and are also equal or congruent. And these two angles in green are called corresponding, and they are equal or congruent. And lastly, this set of this yellow-orange color um, are also called corresponding angles, and they are congruent, or they are equal. So if I know, like, the green angle is 120 up here, this green angle is 120. If this red angle is, let's say, 45, this red angle would have to be 45. But we'd need the math reason of saying that corresponding angles are equal. So our first pair of angles was corresponding. Now we're going to talk about alternate interior angles. And when the transversal cuts through two parallel lines, alternate interior angles are equal. So alternate interior, these two angles are on alternate sides of the transversal. And they are inside because they're inside the two parallel lines. So alternate interior angles are inside the two parallel lines and on alternating sides of the transversal. So the two angles in this yellowish color are alternate interior and they're equal. And the two angles on green are on opposite sides of the transversal and they are also equal. Because they're easy to spot that they're inside the parallel lines and they're on alternate sides of the transversal, but those pairs of angles have the properties of always being equal. And for our third and last set of angles, we have alternate exterior. So what's exterior mean? Well, exterior is talking about outside. So when the transversal cuts through two parallel lines, alternate exterior angles are equal. So alternate exterior angles are going to be outside the two parallel lines, and they are on opposite sides. So outside of the parallel lines on alternate sides of the transversal. 
So the two angles shown in green are alternate exterior and they are always equal or congruent. And the two in purple are always equal or congruent. So when it comes to these names and these properties, you're gonna to need to be able to recognize them by name. And you're gonna to have to say that that's the reason why they're equal. You can't just say, oh, it looks like it. Looks like it is not a good math reason. You need to have a good math reason why two angles are equal. And in this case, if you see the sets of angles in green, alternate exterior angles would be the reason that they are equal. So let's name that pair of angles. What would that pair of angles be? Alternate interior angles. How about this one? What are those pair of angles? Ooh, Mr. Slope Guy, we didn't talk about that recently. Well, at the very beginning, we did a little bit. Those two angles are vertical. They are right across from each other, and we know that vertical angles are equal, and those could be included in parallel line properties as well. How about this pair of angles? They're outside the parallel lines. They're on opposite sides or alternating sides of the transversal. Those are alternate exterior angles. How about this pair? Alternate exterior. We have supplementary. We have two angles that together form this straight line. This angle plus this angle make a straight line. They add up to 180. They are supplementary angles. How about this pair? Well, together they make the transversal, so together they add up to 180. Those are called supplementary. So it could be along the transversal, it could be along one of the parallel lines, but if you have two angles that together form a straight line, you have supplementary angles. All right, so let's look at a problem that you'd be given um, on parallel lines. So we have given that line A is parallel to line B. That means we can use our properties of parallel lines. Angle 4 equals 62 degrees. So we need good math reasons for everything. So let's start with angle four is 62, and we can cover angle four. We'll just put 62 over that because we're given that information. That's our reason is that we were, we were told that. We start with angle four is 62. And let's look for angle seven. Well, angle seven is directly across. It is vertical from 62, so we could say vertical angles are equal. So angle seven must be 62, because vertical angles are equal. Now let's look for angle 5. Well, if I look at this one I just found, 62 and 5, those two angles correspond. So if they correspond, they are equal. So angle 5 is 62, and our reason is that corresponding angles are equal. How about angle 1? Well, 62 and 1 are right beside each other. Together they form this straight line. So I would say they add up to 180. They're supplementary. They make a line. So if I take 180, subtract 62, angle 1 has to be 118 because supplementary angles add up to 180. How about angle 8? Well, what's the relationship between the angle I just found, 118, and angle 8? Well, they are alternate exterior angles, and alternate exterior angles are equal. So that one's 118, because alternate exterior angles equal each other. And I could have found other ones in a different order, not just in the order that I found them. And there are many um, different ways that could apply to that. I could also get 118 because it's supplementary to 62, or supplementary to the 62. So... There um, are different ways. The beautiful thing about math, lots of ways to the right answer, and these properties all work together. How about angle three? Well, I just found this was 118. What's the relationship between this angle and 118? They are vertical, and vertical angles are equal. How about angle six? Well, 118 and six. What's the relationship between this angle and this angle? Well, they're inside the parallel lines, opposite sides of the transversal or alternate sides of the transversal. They are alternate interior angles, therefore they're equal. So this is 118. And that leaves us last, angle 62. I'm sorry, angle number two. And there are several ways we could ink angle two is 62 degrees. We could say it's supplementary to 118, supplementary to this 118, alternate interior with this one, or we could say it's corresponding 
with this angle. All of those would be good reasons that those are equal. So if you have a polygon, like a triangle, as part of your figure, you can use the fact that sum of angles of every triangle is 180 degrees. So like the sum of interior angles of a triangle, we have a triangle in the middle here with angles 1, 2, and 3, and they add up to 180 degrees. Hope that helps you guys out with parallel lines. Have a great day.